This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I use imported meshes to cut other meshes? So the user that submitted this question had two STL files that they wanted to import into ZBrush. One of these STL files they then wanted to take and use as a cutter object for that first part. So they had a model, and then they wanted to turn it into a puzzle. So they had their initial shape, and then they had their puzzle die that they wanted to use to cut those pieces out of that main model. So I'm going to go through the process here of how to import in two STL files, and then use that second STL file as a cutter object, and then take that object and turn it into geometry so I can get a mesh that looks like a puzzle. So the first thing we want to do is I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have a PolyMesh 3D star here loaded in. And I just want to import in my STL files. So I'm going to go to the tool palette and click on import. This is going to open up a dialog window here. In here I want to select my first STL part. So I have puzzle part number one. And then I'm just going to come over here and click open. This is now going to pop up a little STL dialog here. And this is going to give me some options for that STL file format. So for this here I just want to skip color. So the mesh doesn't contain any vertex coloring. So I'm just going to keep that on. And I'm going to click OK. And this should now load that STL file in. And here you can see I have my first part. So the part here is a Escher lizard. So I made a tiling Escher lizard pattern. And then I used the Z CNC plugin on the Pixelogic Resource Center to take that pattern and tile it across a rectangle or shape. So this is going to be my initial STL here that I want to use to create this puzzle. So now that I have one of these STLs loaded in, I now need to load in my second STL, which is that die or cutter object. So to do this, I want to make sure it comes into the same tool that contains this STL file. So I'm going to come over to the tool palette over here. I'm going to go to the subtool area. I'm going to come down to the append option. And I want to append a dummy subtool to this tool. So I'm going to click append. And then in here, I'm going to select the PolyMesh 3D star. And you'll see after I do this process, I'm now going to have two subtools in my list here. So I have my original puzzle part that I just imported in, and then I have that PolyMesh 3D star. So now I want to select that PolyMesh 3D star, and then now go back up to the tool palette up here, and now click Import again, which is going to open up this dialog here. In here, I'm going to select that second puzzle piece part. And when I click Open this time, what ZBrush is going to do, it's going to take that STL, it's going to import it in, and then it's going to replace this PolyMesh 3D star that I just appended into my scene. So I'm going to click Open here. I'm going to get that little dialog to come up again for the STL option. It's going to click OK. You'll see that STL has now been read in, and you'll see it's replaced that PolyMesh 3D star. So now this tool file contains my original puzzle part, and then also my cutter or my die shape. So now I have both these objects in my scene. So now that I have both of these meshes in one tool here, I can now use the live Boolean system to preview the cutting process that's going to be happening with this die compared to my original shape. So I'm going to come up here to the top and click on this live Boolean button here, which is going to put ZBrush in live Boolean preview mode. Now you'll notice when I turn that on, nothing happened on my screen here. And this is because I now have to tell ZBrush, hey, this second subtool I've added to the scene, I want to set it as subtraction so it will cut into my original mesh. So I'm going to navigate over to the tool palette again, go to the subtool area here, and you'll see on each of these subtools there's these little icons at the top here. So these three icons here in the middle are the ones that we're going to use with the live Boolean. So the first one we have here is union, then next to it we have subtraction, and then we have intersection. So I want to set this second puzzle part as a subtractive element. So I'm going to come here and activate that second icon here, which is subtraction. And you'll see, after I toggle that to subtractive, if I have live Boolean preview on, you see I'm now getting that shape in a preview mode that's showing it cutting into the model. So you can see it's subtracting that secondary subtool, and now I'm getting those puzzle pieces displayed on my original mesh. Now since this is a live Boolean preview mode, I can also modify this subtool now and change how this part is cutting into the surface of the other mesh. So I can come up here to the Move, Scale, or Rotate options to activate the Gizmo 3D. And here I can now manipulate that subtool, and you'll see it's going to show me this preview of the live Boolean process. So I can rotate this, I can scale it, I can pretty much customize it however I want to get that other shape to cut into my original mesh. 
Now this is still only a preview. So if I turn off Live Boolean, you can see this is what those two meshes are looking like. But I want to take both these meshes now and I want to turn them into true geometry so that I can then isolate each of the individual puzzle parts and say print those out. So I'm going to come over here to the subtool palettes and I'm going to select my top tool here, so the original puzzle part. And then I'm going to scroll down to the Boolean area and open this up. And in here there is a Make Boolean Mesh button. So when you click Make Boolean Mesh, what ZBrush is going to do, it's going to look at your subtools from top to bottom and it's going to see what processes are currently going to be performed. So it's going to take my initial part here, it's then going to look at this one here, and since it's set to subtraction, it's going to subtract this form out and then give me the mesh geometry that would happen. So I'm going to come here and click that Make Boolean Mesh to process this with the Live Boolean system. You see it's going to calculate the top here. Now after this is completed, if I scroll back up to the top here, you'll see I should have a new tool that should be labeled umesh underscore and then the name of your current tool. And if I click on that, you'll see I now have this part. And if I disable live boolean here, this is the true part that I'm getting here. So it's taken that live boolean preview and it's now converted its geometry. Now if I want each of these individual parts to be broken off into a new mesh, I now go to the tool palette and go down to the polygroups area here. I can do an auto group, which is going to look at all the geometry islands that this tool consists of. And this is now going to give a new polygroup to each of those. So if I turn on my polyframes and turn off line, you can see I now have my model broken up into these polygroups. I can then hold control and shift, and this will give me the select rectangle brush. I can then isolate each one of these parts. So you can see now I have my mesh broken up into all these little puzzle pieces here. And then if I want these pieces to be split off into new subtools, so each of these little parts to be their own subtool, I just go to this subtool palette here, I can go to the split area, and then I can do group split, which is going to go through and look at all those polygroups, and now it's going to give me subtools for every single one. And so you see now I've taken that model, and now I have it broken up into multiple subtools, and each of those subtools is a different puzzle piece. So that is the quick process on how you can import in two STL files, then take those STL files and use the live Boolean system to set one of them as your main form and then set the other one as a subtractive form. You can then use the subtool Boolean make Boolean mesh option to process that live Boolean and turn it into true geometry. After that's processed, you can then auto groups in the polygroup tab here to give all those geometry islands new polygroups. You can then use those polygroups to split them off into separate subtools. And then you can now export these subtools out and print them off and you'll have your puzzle pieces generated. So I hope that helps. And if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.